Hello everyone and welcome to today's No FOMO Charts Crypto and Stocks TA Charts video. Today is July 26, 2024, just about 10 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Welcome everybody. This is a swing trading and charts education video. I am No FOMO Charts. I'm on YouTube X and Trading View. Let's get started with the crypto news. Bitcoin 2024 conference is ongoing. The Trump keynote speech is on Saturday, July 27, 2 o'clock p.m. Ethereum ETF sell the news. Volatility was affected by the recent tech market stock sell-off as well. SEC approved the Grayscale Bitcoin Mini Trust, and the Ethereum Mini Trust was recently launched as well. Mt. Gox Bitcoin repayments and transfers are still ongoing. There could be a potential delayed sell-off in the future. Eight Ethereum ETFs were approved and began trading last week on stock exchanges. Let's get into the crypto charts. The market is volatile right now. And just beware that the stock market sell-off could affect the crypto market sell-off as well. It's mixed right now. So as it stands right now, total crypto market cap. We want to watch out that we're not going to get faked out with all these news and announcements because there could be a potential head and shoulders pattern. I am seeing that right now on the charts. It is right above support, so it's about maybe 50-50 mixed. This might not actually happen, but in the bearish case, we could pull back 6% on Bitcoin if things go bad, sell off. That would take us back down to 2.15 trillion market cap in the blue X area. However, in the bullish case, because of all this Bitcoin conference and et cetera, we could actually extend also five to 6% to the upside. But you can see we've kind of stagnated below 2.4 trillion and between 2.2 to 2.4 trillion. So what we really want to watch out for that and the 2.6 trillion area would be the upside target. So for now, I'm not going to get extremely aggressive right now with Bitcoin because the news can flip us either way. And it's a very volatile week with stock earnings coming up. So just to double check on the weekly, we do have this hammer candle that back tested the 20 SMA on the weekly chart. Daily chart, we're holding above the 50 EMA with this potential hammer, potential morning star pattern, but the larger head and shoulders is looming, meaning there's some resistance. The good thing is the four hours still in the up cross. So if that holds for one more month, that's very good for Bitcoin. Now, let's go to Bitcoin itself. Very similar. The chart looks a little bit different though, right? We are at right below the 68291 resistance, horizontal resistance, okay? So we're playing between 65,550 to 68, 200 area. And the same kind of logic applies, plus or minus 5%. We break out 5% bullish, we're going to 71, $72,000 Bitcoin. If we break down from this in the big target, we could crash down to 62. So the news is very important coming out in the next week. I mean, next week we have big tech earnings. We have like Microsoft and Apple, et cetera. So it's a big week all around. And we have an FOMC meeting as well. It's going to be a very volatile week. Weekly chart, we did test that 20 EMA. Excuse me, this is a 12 EMA. We bounced off that. That's good. Week hasn't closed yet, so that's why I'm not calling that yet. The four hour is still up cross. That's good, except we're playing in this range. Remember, we're right at a relative resistance. Got rejected down below 6,800, 333 area. Just watch out for that. Ethereum. Ethereum had a, quite a volatile sell-off. And I just want to draw these two spots right here. We're stuck between support and resistance. The larger area as such. So we're stuck between 3,900 and 2,800. Basically, this almost parallel channel. So we are kind of floating around here, testing, retesting this middle heart line, I like to call it $3,300 Ethereum. Only good thing is we did break out and retest. That's good. We actually broke out of the descending triangle, so that's good. 
Now, what needs to hold is this 200 EMA, $3,100 Ethereum has to hold. We cannot crash back into this triangle. So that's the level I'm looking at, 3,100. If we break out, 3,300, it's very simple. So if we have a higher high, we're probably going up to 3,800. A lower low takes us back down to 2,800. I'm just gonna keep it simple like that. I don't have to play every single tick of the market. As a swing trader, I just wanna capture a bulk of the move. I have to be correct on the majority of direction. But I don't have to trade every single candle. That's not what swing trading is. So in four hour, the bad thing is on Ethereum is that we are under this four hour 200 EMA if you're a swing trader on the four hour chart. So we lost that support. We had a terrible sell off about four or 5%. Try to retest that, but we're starting to get a little rejected here. So just beware. Let's not get too bullish. Do a couple more here. Do a shorter video. Binance coin. Now it's... The only thing good about Binance is if we hold support, there could be a potential upside down head and shoulders on Ethereum on the daily chart. That move could be about 18%. This could be a huge move. It's going to take a couple of months, though. It's not happening in two days. But if this, the bullish target is 689, if we pull back, probably pulling back to about 508 area. So just watch out for that on the daily chart. When I say watch out, that doesn't mean panic or anything. This is literally my watch list that I am watching as well. I just observe until I find a good setup. I don't have to trade every single candle if it flips green or red, doesn't matter to me. I'm looking at the majority trend. We just lost that. So Ethereum needs to prove itself right now. Four hour, only good thing, like I said, four hour, you can see it again. There, hopefully we could try to get this bullish break on the upside down head and shoulders to take us to 600. But if not, this could be low, high, low, lower, high, and then lower, low. So that's why. Be mindful of that. Solana. Solana was our lead altcoin. And on a weekly, we had a very nice symmetrical triangle breakout up to resistance point. The next resistance would be 205. And the next level of support would be 165. That's a big range. Big range. The daily chart. Let me clean this up for us. We did double bottom off of the 200 EMA on the daily chart and we went, I traded this, had some nice profit. And we're almost at the target. 23% would take us to 190. That's clear resistance. You just draw that line and wow, right to the left side, there's a lot of touch points on that. So it is a strong resistance. And just consolidating right now, it's all about the news. The good thing is the four hours in the up cross, great. However, when I'm in a four hour, I like to buy dips. Okay, if I just jump into the market right now, full position risk, this could actually sell off on me because the 15 minute, one hour, five minute could pull back. So that's why I don't like buying resistance. Anytime I buy resistance, it's almost always a loss for me. So that's why I'm just reminding people Let's just retry to buy support levels. Support levels, that's all we need. Yes, it feels bad buying it because it's red or the market's crashing, but bulls, we have to come in and like save that price until it stops working. At some point, it stops working, but for now, it has been working. Just watch out for the double top on the daily. Where's the double top range? 185. Need to make sure we're not getting faked out here on crypto hype from a W into an M. And if it crashes on tech earnings and, and there's a correlation, that's taking us down to like 170 area. So just watch out for that. Okay, let's move on to stocks. I have to do a shorter video today. All right, thank you everyone for watching the crypto segment. If you liked or learned something from the video, go ahead and hit the like button, click subscribe for more content. Move on to stocks. July 26, 2024, stock segment. It's a big week for tech earnings, very big week. A lot of stock earnings, all the big global names, McDonald's, Pfizer releasing earnings this week, Microsoft, Starbucks, AMD, Meta, Boeing, MasterCard's in there. There's some meme plays in there that we're watching closely, Siri, Hertz, I traded those, Coinbase. The big names, Amazon, Intel, Apple, ExxonMobil, it's all the big tech companies this week. And 
to make things even more volatile, we have the FOMC interest rate Federal Reserve press conference on Wednesday, July 31st in the morning time, my time. So FOMC statement, federal funds rates. We also have consumer confidence, employment change, pending home sales, unemployment claims, unemployment rate, et cetera. A lot of data. Stock earnings, big tech week continues. FOMC meeting this week. Now, interesting, 15 other tech firms plus Apple signed a voluntary, voluntary commitment governing AI to ensure that AI's power is not used for destructive purposes. Hopefully that comes true many decades from now. Also, just a real estate data point, in the U.S. Southern region, especially Florida and Texas states, record high of unsold homes. Interesting data point. USA quarterly GDP increased up to 2.8%, and that exceeded expectations for GDP growth. Very good. June core PCE was flat at 0.2%, but that was in line with expectations. Now, this is... Uh, rumors that uh, there could be a September rate cut, but I'm, I'm not going to call that. I'm just going to wait for the Federal Reserve chairman to call that. So we're watching for that. This week, a lot of volatility in stocks. So let's jump over SPY. Okay. So this chart obviously looks way different than crypto, right? Crypto was green, green, green. Stocks was red, red, red. And remember, I was... Generally saying, watch out, we had bearish divergence. I think I talked about it for almost two weeks. This bearish divergence, which is basically over now in terms of the big, big overbought play. That's kind of over now. Market's down from that exact spot, 2% in terms of that chart setup. But the sell-off might not be over because on a weekly, there is this type of evening star pattern. And the weekly still in the just came down out of the overbought region. I would say the weekly would reset if it comes down to like 50 or 40 RSI on a weekly. Now, four hour, only interesting thing is it barely tapped oversold on Thursday. And then we had that good news on Friday. So it's really news dependent. But the fact is we're testing this four hour EMA. So what that means, I'm looking at resistance 549, support level 537, just play very simple. And it's not uptrending until we have a upward cascade, meaning a upward trend change on the 15 minute, on the hourly, four hour, the daily still uptrending, but I'm talking about the price. I'm not talking about the EMAs, I'm talking about price. So we could have a little bit of this relief bounce, like I was saying, a little bit of relief bounce. And then if we have anything bad happening, a, a reshort. So I'm watching for that to happen. NASDAQ is very similar, is more extreme on NASDAQ. Now, how could it this been forecasted? It's actually pretty easy to see on the charts because if we just turn off the EMAs, just draw a trend line and understand we were uptrending, not anymore, and we crashed out of there. So very simple. That's why for weeks I was saying I was shorting, what did I short up here? NASDAQ. I shorted QQQ itself, I shorted Semiconductor ETF, and then I shorted Starbucks on the side. Um, I had good long trade on Siri, that was, that was good, but that's um, pretty much uh, that one setup was over. But you can see on the QQQ and the ETF that this head and shoulders is appearing, right? And we just broke the neckline. So sometimes what happens with this uh, QQQ setup is it could bounce up to retest the neckline. And if anything bad happens, you get the lower high. So low, high, low, high, low. What's the next high? Maybe bearish case would fall back down. So Fibonacci this from low to high. And you can see we're bouncing right after that 50%. It's probably bouncing up to the 382 or a little bit higher than that. So 473 resistance and 450 is my support. We bounce up and then crash down. I'm looking at 446. And we're not uptrending in the market until we have this happening on the blue higher highs and higher lows. We are not having that right now. We had that for three months and we crashed out of that. So it's bear mode right now. Bears are in control. Only thing I, that I could say if you're a bull is maybe we might have upside down head and shoulders on the H4 and the H1. If it does, that's taking us to 477 over time. So just watch. I'm watching this. Everybody's watching you. Let's we'll see what happens there. Now, in terms of the break. So I just want to make it clear, 
For people, this is swing trading. My style is I play support and resistance breaks and trend. So until I get a clear signal, right, I'm not buying anything. I My style is I create two setups and then I just execute. So for instance, for example, if it opens up uh, very red, a New York open and it starts crashing, I'll probably short some more, right? If it's going to long green, New York open, then probably this is going to turn to that little upside down head and shoulders and head straight to 471, right? So it's very simple for me. I don't try to overcomplicate it. Sometimes I don't even trade. If it's too volatile, if it's not my strategy or setup, I just pass and wait. Which is actually very critical skill for swing trade. Okay. Let's go with Dow Jones here. Now we had a little bit of a small cap bounce here. You can also see the trend line on the top side was broken. So we broke down into that tested 26 AMA and we're bouncing off of here. So the resistance about 412, still 412 to about 409. We could reject and pull back down. That could take about two or three months, however, low, lower high, lower low. So that's one scenario. But if we establish a higher high and a higher low, that could actually turn to an upside down head and shoulders, which would take us back to about 413. So I'm watching that very closely. Shooting star to a hammer candle. So obviously we're fighting up here. And the four hours still in the up cross, testing the 100 and bouncing up to about the 407 level. So this is an interesting play, right? Lower low, lower high, lower low, the higher high. So I'm expecting a higher low, maybe a trend change. And that just drew an upside down head and shoulders. So that's bullish. Okay, IWM is different. Everyone's loving small caps right now. So this really is the play, small caps. However, wanting to buy support levels. Right, boom, here, double bottom. And then if this breaks above 225, that's a resistance. It could be a breakout continuation play. Now on the weekly, it's still, that shooting star was hesitation, but it broke through to the upside with the bullish engulfing candle. Starting to almost look like a four hour, almost a four hour ascending triangle, right? So this is how I'm gonna play it. If it doesn't break out above 226, retest 224, it could pull back to the 220 range, okay? Right, 220 range, and then see if it's gonna break out again. So that's why, if it doesn't break out, I'm gonna be patient, wait for that to come back down on IWM. Let's do one more. I'll just do XLK or SMH. Let's do SMH for semiconductors. So we had that double top here at 283 and we lost support 255. That gives extra confidence to the bears to just short to the downside. Are we in uptrend or downtrend? Is downtrend the short term? Still in the long term uptrend? Now the question is, is how far will we short down? We have tech earnings, we're walking right into it. So this either 100 EMA is going to help. I could pull up a pivots for some extra info here. 218, 212 could be our support levels if it just capitulation crash. I kind of want to buy tech once it has a flash crash outside the Bollinger Band. I like that strategy outside the Bollinger Band, maybe even a low uh, purple RSI. And uh, that's a lot of people use that strategy. So that's why I'm just waiting a little bit. It's not quite exactly where I want it to be in terms of longing, but you can see that double top on the um, the weekly bearish divergence. It did bring us back into 52 weekly RSI. So we get a little bit of a reset here. And uh, on the four hour, there does seem to be some bullish momentum is starting. It may not be the exact bottom. So I, I'm assuming, I'm presuming the bears are gonna keep trying to attack this di after digesting earnings and uh, interpreting it and try to do that into the market, take us back down 226 or 215. And then if I was a bull, once it gets really extreme down here, then I get my next setup and then try to play that long. And uh, news can flip anything. That's why tech earnings news is very important. If all five, four companies uh, like uh, Microsoft, Meta, AMD, Apple, Intel, they, if they all have good earnings, like 80% of them have good earnings, I mean, we could see a, a green week in terms of the bounce. If that happens, that resistance takes us to 254. If it's more than 50% bad earnings, probably crash continue, 230 to 220 area. So let's just keep that in mind. 
Thank you for watching this uh, slightly shorter video. If you like this video, go ahead and click like and subscribe, leave a comment for um, next video. Happy trading and remember risk management, stop losses, profit targets, and we need to be aware of the uh, tech earnings and FOMC interest rate that's coming out this upcoming week. Okay, happy trading. See you in the next video.